Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. A great advantage of having a 3D printer and being able to make your own designs is it gives you the ability to tackle a whole bunch of home improvement projects where you need a very specialized or customized design and you sometimes you just can't get the part anywhere, other times you just may not feel like paying for it. Um, so here's my problem I was having and some of you may be able to relate We live in an apartment where we have one of these light switches that are connected to an electrical outlet now I recently remodeled my room and the only place I could find to put my computer desk was near this particular outlet However, this created a problem where I had to use that outlet that is controlled by the light switch to plug in my computer now I tried to remember not to turn off the switch when I leave the room, but of course subconsciously I would leave the room occasionally and just wave my hand to turn off the switch and there goes my computer and any work I didn't save. So in an attempt to just quickly solve this problem, I first created this little bracket here um, that went over the light switch as sort of a cover to prevent me from flicking the switch. Now this worked for me, it was great. It was sort of that minimum viable solution. I was able to design it in like 30 seconds in Fusion 360, printed it in a couple minutes and installed it. However, one day we had guests here and I found out that with curious kids and even adults, they'll actually go in, fit their finger through the little slot and turn off the light. So I needed a way to sort of kid proof this or just foolproof it so that you can't turn off the switch. So I went back to Fusion 360 and changed the design so that it is impossible to turn off the light switch. And what I wanna show you today is more of the technique and approach that I used to solve this problem. It's not going to be uh, more of a tutorial in Fusion 360, but just more of an approach you can take to designing a custom part. I removed the old brackets and the approach I took was to simply take my cell phone camera and take a picture of the side profile of the light switch. Now a picture by itself is not enough and you'll have to get some precise measurements. So this is where a digital caliper really comes in handy. I took dimensions of the light switch plate and also grabbed the distance between the two screw holes and then took the dimension between the bottom of the switch and the bottom screw hole. With those dimensions, that's enough information to be able to accurately model a cover for this light switch. All right, let's jump into Fusion and I'll show you exactly how I used this information to recreate the part. Oh, and yes, I do realize I could have just made a box around the light switch, but I wanted to keep that profile of the switch and also have something that printed in less than 10 minutes. I'm gonna begin by going to insert, attach canvas, select my plane, and then bring in that picture that I took. Now, the first thing I need to do is calibrate this, and this is where the dimensions come in. So the wall plate, I measured it at 114.5, so I'm gonna enter that in. And now I can just move my canvas into place and I'm ready to begin sketching. I'll create a sketch on the same plane as my canvas and the approach I'm going to take here is to grab my line tool and simply trace around that light switch. Now as you can see, I'm not following that profile exactly. I'm leaving some space in between my outline and the profile of the switch. I don't need this to be a friction fit. I just need it to work. So I'm gonna add some constraints and some dimensions, but for the most part, I'm gonna leave it undefined. That way it'll allow me to come back and simply tweak the lines by just moving them around. Once I'm happy with my outline, I'll create an offset. I'm going with a negative two millimeter offset here, which will be my thickness. I'll close the ends and now I have a profile I can extrude. Next, I'm gonna create a couple points and dimension them. And this will be reference geometry that I'm gonna pull in in my next sketch, which will show me exactly where that bottom mounting hole needs to go. I'm gonna extrude this 10 millimeters and now I'll create a sketch on that top surface of the body and I'll work on my mounting holes. I made these uh, four millimeters in diameter and I'm gonna now go ahead and add some dimensions. This is a critical dimension. If, if this is off, it's simply not gonna work. So I'm gonna project in some dimensions and then I'm gonna grab that uh, reference point that I just made there and I'm gonna go ahead and align that circle to that point and, and then dimension this at 60.5 millimeters, which was the dimension I grabbed using my calipers. All right, now I can simply extrude these 
through. And the final thing that's left is just add some fillets here just to round off those sharp corners. I went with a one millimeter fillet. All right, and that completes the light switch cover. Let's turn that canvas back on just so we can see how this looks. It looks like we should get a pretty good fit. So let's print this out and see what happens. I sent this to my Prusa. I printed this at about 20% infill and used orange PLA just because that's what I had loaded on my printer. This was a quick print. It only took eight minutes to complete. And now for the moment of truth. I attached this to my light switch cover using the two mounting screws. And to be completely honest, this was my second attempt. The first try, the holes were a couple millimeters off. So I just had to go back into Fusion and reposition them. When using a camera to take a picture that you're going to reference, it's not going to be precise, especially if you don't position your camera perfectly straight. But getting this in two tries, I'll consider it a success. And now I have a foolproof light switch cover. All right, let me know what you thought of this technique. And if you have any home improvement projects that you've been able to tackle with the help of your 3D printer, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear some of them. All right, guys, as always, like and subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next week.